Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. In this video, I'm going to talk about how and why you would install an auxiliary fuse box on your motorcycle. Now, I have a particular one in mind here that I'm going to try. However, I'm going to make this generic so you can use any parts you find in a parts store, online, wherever. So the reason you might need an auxiliary fuse box is because you're adding accessories to the bike. Might be lights for the front or for the rear if you're doing brake lights. Might be heated gear, uh, sometimes a horn all sorts of things and there may not be enough electrical capacity in the existing circuits provided by the manufacturer so you might need to add some. Now there are two ways your motorcycle might be set up for their existing or OEM electrical system. One is the old school way of doing things in which case you'd have a fuse box something like this. This is on a Can-Am Riker. You open it up and you can see there's a series of fuses in there, some larger, some smaller for various different circuits on the bike and there's some relays in there as well. This is pretty typical of older bikes and you will find this on some newer bikes as well. On more expensive bikes, uh, you may find what's called a CAN bus network. And that's a system designed to replace a fuse box. So instead, you'll have a computer that controls each circuit. And this CAN bus network allows the computer to communicate with the various electrical devices on the bike. You have a previous video of mine you might have seen, in which case on this RT I tied in using the Hex Easy Can, and that allows you to add circuits to a bike with a CAN bus system. That's not the only way to do it, but it's one way, uh, probably the more expensive way. So I showed you that on a previous video, but in this one, we're gonna talk about adding a fuse box, which can be added to a CAN bus bike. Now in this video, the auxiliary fuse box will be added to this Can-Am Riker, but what I'm gonna tell you applies to any motorcycle. All right, here's a quick conceptual review of what we're gonna be doing if you already know this, you can skip ahead to the installation. So your motorcycle has a 12 volt DC battery and that has two functions. The first function is to store energy so that when you go to start the bike, you can tap into that stored energy to turn the starter over get the engine running. When the engine is running, you have a charging system, an alternator or stator, which is providing voltage or electricity uh, to both the battery and the electrical system of the bike. Sometimes uh, that may fall a little short. Like let's say you're at idle and you're running heated gear or something else and just just a high draw, you may not have quite enough power. In which case that's the second function of the battery to act as sort of a buffer. So all of this leads to then either a fuse box like we saw in the picture earlier or a CAN bus network with the ECU. Both of those do basically the same thing. They control individual circuits on the bike. So your lights, your horn, your dash, all those things are run off of either the fuse box or the CAN bus network with the ECU. In the case of a fuse box, um, you have an individual fuse for each circuit typically, and if something goes wrong, the fuse blows, you can replace it. For a CAN bus network with the ECU, each circuit is monitored, and if there's a problem, the ECU will shut down uh, that circuit. So it does the same thing, it just does it in a different way. One major difference is though, with a CAN bus network, you can't just tap into a particular circuit and change the resistance in a circuit. There are values pre-programmed into the ECU and it wants to see those specific values. If it sees something outside of those values, it will complain. A fuse box, on the other hand, it is possible sometimes to tap into a particular circuit. With a CAN bus system, it generally is not. But either way, the function of this is to provide the individual circuits. Now, that's all well and good, but now we want to add auxiliary lights or a horn or auxiliary brake lights or heated gear perhaps, and we need some additional circuits. Well, the factory fuse box probably uh, isn't a place where you can add more circuits and certainly you can't to the CAN bus system. So what you probably will want to do is add an auxiliary fuse box. Now there's two different ways you could do this. One is to just add the fuse box itself, in which case you would buy a, a fuse box, they're not expensive, and you would tie it into the battery and that power would always be on. Now that's inconvenient, right? Because if you have a light or something that might continue to run after the bike is turned off, it's gonna run the battery down and you won't have that energy stored for starting later. So that's kind of a problem. You would have to remember to turn this off. You might put a switch in line 
uh, with the battery to the auxiliary fuse box, but then you'd have to remember to turn that switch off manually. So to avoid part of that, we can add a relay. So basically a relay you can think of as a gatekeeper. The way, and now there's many different types of relays, but the one I'm talking about, the way it's set up, is that you have power coming in and power going out, which would be a high amperage power. And then you have a third connection there, which is for a switched power. That third connection, it's kind of like a gate. So the relay itself is the gate, and the latch on the gate is this little switched or ignition connector. So what we can do is we can set up a cable from the battery into the auxiliary fuse, or I'm sorry, into the relay, and then into the auxiliary fuse box. Uh, the, the negative would go directly to the fuse box. And this relay will be on or off depending on the signal it gets from a switched electrical circuit here. So what we need to do is find an electrical circuit on the bike from the factory that we can tap into safely, uh, and that would power the relay. Once the relay is on, the full power goes to the fuse box. If the relay is off, then the power is cut. So you can see, you turn the ignition on, the relay will power up and allow power to go through to the fuse box. You turn the ignition off, the relay is uh, powered down and does not allow power to get to the fuse box. Now having said that, a fuse box is very inexpensive. You can buy them at an automotive parts store for next to nothing. A relay, same thing. These are not expensive items, but the one drawback in buying some of these things from an auto parts store or even online is that they are physically pretty big. And on a motorcycle, we really don't want, you know, physically big things to have to try to hide. Maybe you can put it under a seat. Maybe there's a spot somewhere you can tuck a fuse box into, but you know, the bigger it gets, the more trouble it is to try to find a place for it. So it would be nice if we could combine both the relay and the fuse box into one small uh, device so that we can tuck it away somewhere more easily. And that brings me to what we have here. I bought just such a device. Now, this is probably, I didn't look, but probably Chinese made, um, and it's very inexpensive. Let's see if it says on the top here. Yeah, made in China. So this is a very inexpensive fuse box. It has four circuits, one, two, three, four, and it has a relay right here built in. And that's the unique part about this. You can get uh, small fuse boxes with a couple, you know, two, three, four fuses in it, but to have the relay built in is nice, and it's a fairly small package you can see in relation to my hand. So this is what I'm going to try. I'm not sure if this particular brand will work or not, uh, if it does, I'll put a link into the comments and you can try to get this for yourself. Now you can see this fuse box has just what we talked about. It has that black wire here and the red wire on the outside. Those are connections to the battery. And in the middle here is where we would need switched power for the relay. So the, the switched power is going to power up that relay and allow battery power to go through to the fuses. So the big question is really, where are we going to get that switched power? Certainly we can connect to the battery easily enough, but that switched power we need to take from the factory harness somewhere. Now my RT, for example, there is a factory harness connector right under here. I actually did a video on it. It's meant for a GPS, either factory or in this case I have a third party. And that would be enough to provide power to the relay. Remember, the relay takes very, very minimal power. So we could certainly connect to that on the RT and power up that relay when the key is switched on, in which case the rest of the fuse box will be powered up as well. Now my Bonneville here, there's a whole mess of wiring inside uh, the headlight here, and I could certainly take power from that. Again, this is a bike with a fuse box, not CAN bus, so it's really not a big deal to tap into an existing circuit, especially when it's very minimal power we're talking about. Uh, in order to power that little relay. Now on the Can-Am Riker here, again, it has a fuse system from the factory, so this shouldn't be too hard. And I was able to find, uh, actually a, it was on eBay, a company that makes a little harness which slips into the factory harness to make it super easy to tap power. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna use here. It's underneath this section here. So even if that didn't exist, again, there would be places, perhaps lights, where I could just take a little bit of power to get that relay going and get the fuse box going. So now what I'm gonna do is do a little planning off camera. There's a cable on here which isn't super long, 
Uh, so I have to figure out where I'm gonna mount this fuse box uh, and make sure it's convenient for the circuits I wanna run. The way this fuse box works, there are connectors here, see all four of them, which you can tap into. They do provide some wires here, which I don't think I'm actually gonna use. They don't look like very good quality. Uh, hopefully this box itself will be fine. All right, if you are a Riker owner and you wanna see this, this is the factory connector. It connects right under there, right underneath the handlebars, you can see, okay? And basically, this uh, little harness that somebody made up on eBay, it's identical to this, right? So you could just replace it, and then it just gives you tapped power over here. All right, I think I have a spot for the auxiliary fuse box. It's not perfect, but it'll get the job done. So I have my connections here. I still have the switch power I have not fed yet. And here's the auxiliary fuse box with the uh, cap or the top applied. And I can mount it either right here with zip ties or I can mount it right here with zip ties uh, to the existing fuse box. So there's a place in here. I got to be careful of the steering linkage here. I got to make sure I don't get in the way of that. But And keep in mind any uh, circuits that I run to this auxiliary fuse box, I got to get the wire down here in this area. But I think it's all doable. All right, I have my wires run. Uh, it's protected by this stuff here, and I have my first circuit, so it's a red and a black here, tied into the fuse box, and this yellow wire is the switched power, okay? Now, I I'm gonna tuck all this away and, and clean it up in a minute, but I just wanna make sure it works first. So that's here on the bottom. And up here on the top, again, here's my switched power, and this is the power that I'm gonna be creating for my circuit, which is actually in this case for a GPS. So I'll tie that in and we'll see if it works. Okay, I have the power on, in other words, the ignition switched on, but the engine not on. And you can see these blue LEDs light up to show me that there is power to uh, the fuse box itself. So that means the relay is working correctly. All right, so now we will give this a test. This is the GPS. This should be powered by this new circuit. And if I remember how to turn this bike back on, uh, there's the ignition, and this should light up, and then we'll see this light up if this works correctly. And look at that. The dash is lighting up, and the Garmin is lighting up. So we do have power. So that's working correctly as it should. Now, when I turn this bike back off, we should see the Garmin lose power. So let's give that a try. This takes a minute to power down, but the dash light is off, so the dash should power off shortly. That's off, and now this should lose power, and there it goes. So it says power's been lost, and I can power it off or let it time out there. And now you can see with the power off, or the switched off, uh, the relay shuts the whole fuse box down. There's no LED lights on. So this is all working correctly, and you know we'll see about the long-term viability of this. I mean, it's working now. Uh, now, all I need left to do is to tie this up, make sure it doesn't bounce around, make sure the wires are all cleaned up and that sort of thing, but basically that's all there is to it. So adding an auxiliary fuse box with a relay is an easy way to get switched power to additional circuits that you might want to add, and as long as you don't go over uh, the fuse rating and the wire capacity for each circuit, then you'll be fine. This is a pretty simple way of doing it, and I, I like this box, as long as it holds up in the long term, it's about as small as it gets, so I will put a link in the comments to this.